I'm Jambo. Viewer, to my viewers. I, I'm here with a sister who will be giving a little presentation this afternoon because we are experiencing some a situation here in Guyana that the sister feels very strongly about. I will ask the sister to introduce herself. My name is Sister Pendid Mian, and I am one of the members of the Steering Committee of African Cultural Development Association ACTA. To the female energy, I'd like to say Ma'at, and to the male energy, Hotep. Jambo? Si Jambo. Si Jambo. Now, Sister Gayan, Abarigani. African History Month. Oh, African History Month. Yes. That is the one month in the year dedicated for our history. But, exactly. Sister, <laughs> I would like to really hear what you have to tell us. Yes. About that. Okay, I will. Okay. Well, as many of us know, that the African, the month of February has been designated to us for African History Month. So we use the 28 or the sometimes 29 days to tell of our achievements and contributions to our community, nation, and the world. However, this year, in the African Culture and Development Association, ACTA Guyana, we have decided that we would like to talk about the Afro-Guyanese contribution to the development of Guyana. I've chosen to speak about the period 1640s to emancipation. But before I do, I'd like to mention something that's very important. And that is that the presence of Africans in the Americas and this part of the world dates 11,500 years ago. This was proven by Luzia, the skull found in Brazil and confirmed by the anthropologist doctors Walter Neves and Hector Pusiarelli. Now, our history is so vast, but for some reason, it, it has been left out of the history books and even persons giving various forums tend to say and write that Africans have made little or no contribution to the development of Guyana. This is totally, totally false. Now, Guyana was formed not for the settlement of people, but for finance, capital development, measured through the volume of profits. Now, we must make mention that Guyana which was not spelled with a G-U-Y, but G-U-I-A and E at the time, Guyana was the most profitable Dutch and then British possession in this part of the, um, of the hemisphere. It was the most profitable. Now, Development needs finance. And how does that finance come about? 
the primary finance necessary for the development of Guyana came firstly from agricultural production. This agricultural production was done brutally, uncompensated labor of Africans. They were forced to plant cotton, cocoa, coffee, tobacco, and the herbs such as quinine that was used for the eradication of malaria. Another contribution. Africans in Guyana were the first sugarcane and rice producers. Secondly, African labor was the first to develop the mining industries in Guyana. Those industries from bauxite to gold to diamond, etc. Now, I did state that I chose the 1640s to emancipation. But I must make mention of this. After 1838, Africans were the main producers of food in this country for domestic consumption. Although the plantation owners waged war against them, they flooded their fields. And even when they recovered from this attack, and were successful with their produces, they brought about laws that prohibited Africans from selling their produce on the open markets. The law stipulated that their produce had to be sold to the Portuguese, who were the middlemen. Africans were also responsible for the law that gave us free labor in this land. It was the 1834 Emancipation Proclamation that brought this about. But this came about because of the revolutionary struggles that Africans have had. Our four parents never ever accepted the Europeans as their masters. So much so that they were continually running off of those plantations. And when they were successful, they formed maroon communities, later called maroon villages. But it was, they had to be guarded. And apart from the guards, the plantation owners employed bounty hunters. The people that were called Amerindian were the bounty hunters who captured, in some instances, the Africans that would run off of the plantations. And they were ordered to bring them back, dead or alive, and they were paid to do so. But the successful ones, as I said earlier, formed maroon colonies where they grew their crops. One of the things were rice. They plant, they had a special breed of rice, a dried rice, which today you can still find in one of the maroon villages called Barakara in the Kanji area. Now it was because of these struggles that they continued, the resistance continued and it culminated in the 1763 revolution that was led by Governor Kofi, who had his own administration. After that, there was a continuation of smaller revolts, and again culminating in a larger revolution 
which took place in 1823, the Demerara Revolution. In that revolution, 200, approximately 235 Africans were massacred. But the resistance continued. It was these revolutionary struggles that brought about the 1833 Emancipation Act. It was this act that freed everyone that came to this country after 1834. A very important contribution that nobody speaks of. Every migrant worker that left India in 1838 and came to Guyana, when they set foot on the shores of this country, they became free persons, simply because slavery was not abolished in India until 1843. There were slaves when they left. Had they gone back within the five years, they were going back into slavery. That is a major, major contribution that Africans have made to this Guyana that nobody talks about. Now, all these things that I've mentioned were only possible because Africans made this land livable. The indigenous Africans that were captured and brought to Guyana in chains and placed in pre-emancipation prison industrial complexes called plantations built the great one of the greatest monuments our seawall which pushed the sea away pushed the sea kept the sea off of the land. In so doing, we cleared 15,000 square miles of forests and salty swampy lands because of the sea being there. That Those 15,000 square miles are equivalent to 18% of the 83,000 square miles that make up Guyana. Cleared 9 million acres of land. Those lands, the fields that the present estates, sugar estates occupy, were part of those nine million acres that we cleared. We also installed 2.58 million miles of drainage canals. Number one, two, and three are a part of this, as well as trenches and interbed drains. The purpose of that was that when the rain fell, it would wash the salt off the lands and it would go back into the rivers and seas, therefore making the lands arable. In addition to that, we cleared 3,500 miles of dams, roads, and footpaths and we did 2,176 miles of sea and river defense. Well, I mentioned before that we built the sea walls. The sea walls is a part of that sea and river defense. But what is important and significant is that these are all the contributions that Africans make to this country. But the greatest contribution is that they did this with the sacrifice of their lives, because there were no HIMACs, there were no bobcats, there were no excavators, there were no drudges. They did this with their bare hands, shovels, and spades. Therefore, if they broke an arm, 
Their heads were bashed against the wall and they thrown overboard to the sharks. They broke a leg. As long as you could not work, you were discarded. It's like you have today your, um, your headlamps on your car. Years ago, you would, if the light goes off, you can change the bulb, you can fix the wire, and you have a new light. Now that is out. You have to take out the entire, sub, the entire module, and then you put a new one in. So this is how we were. We were removed and replaced because the human cargo kept coming. It is only when the so-called Atlantic trade, slave Atlantic trade came to an end that we medicated, we were, the Africans were medicated because they had no replacements, so they had to ensure that they're taken care of so that they can work on those plantations. So their life expectancy went from five years to 20s, 30s, until they continued to increase. That was the situation. Now, what is the significance? The great contribution from what I just stated is that the Africans laid out the drainage and irrigation of this land. Because they did that, they were able to build the infrastructure of this country. So the contributions are so vast. You cannot build any proper structure without a foundation. This is what the Africans gave to this country. Everything else that everyone else has done was done because the Africans made the foundation. They are the foundation of Guyana. That is the contribution. So I feel that if all ethnic and racial groups, especially the young among us, will learn the true history of Guyana and not the miseducation that is taught, we will be able to achieve the social cohesion so desperately needed in this, in this land. I have just touched on the tip of the iceberg. Our contributions are so vast, but the period I chose is because I wanted to deal with the foundation. Now, as you continue to follow us on the active page, I know you will see the continuation of this, where others will be telling you about the other contributions, because we have not even looked and of course, those would be the um, post-emancipation, I think, after 1838. You will look, they will be telling you about the village movement, the local government, the co-op system, all those things. So these are things that you will look forward to um, being told about. And I am indeed extremely happy to be making this little presentation to you. I hope it has been helpful. And with that, I say a shay, a shay, a shay. I want to show you my Sankofa bird. I love this. I have it whenever I'm doing a presentation because I think this is one of the reasons why I chose the period I did. Because if we do not look back to gain the wisdom and the knowledge we certainly will not know where we're going. So this is very important, that we know the history and the culture in order that it may take us forward. Ashe.